Hey guys, this is Cole with Regal Metal Works. Hey, I forgot to film an intro today, but what we're working on today is making some cellar grates. Basically cover a cellar window that's a recessed window. So I'm just cutting out the frame here and I'll go to more details as we get along. No, no malfunction. So it actually, I just talked with Hypertherm, and it takes two seconds. It's always in expanded mode, expanded metal mode, unlike the old 45 that you had to switch to turn on and off. Um, but it see if. If it doesn't see a piece of metal in two seconds, it shuts the arc down. Now, when I've tried to recut like pieces of metal that I've already cut, it would shut down um, because it didn't see the metal there. So I was concerned that it wasn't going to work, but he reassured me it would unless there was a malfunction with the board. So there we go, it cut. That's awesome. It saves me a huge amount of time. Sweet. So there we go. This is how I'm going to make it. So I got this all cut out and it's going to get tacked underneath so it's a half an inch uh, shorter so it's actually cut out to that size and then I'm going to take a one inch piece of flat bar I have and then wrap it around there and tack it on the inside so we'll stand up one inch and we'll have um, this mounts to the back of the wall they wanted a two inch piece here so I just used two inch two inch angle wire apologize for that and uh, then we'll get powder coated white yeah, we'll two more now We have to remove this dross, which is on the edge here, as you can see, from the plasma cutting. That's when you, <clears throat> the plasma just blasts through it, and what doesn't uh, fall into the water table will actually get slag on the side. They call it dross. You can uh, sand it off, but it's a little pain to sand off, um, or you can knock it off with a scraper. Let me use one of these scrapers here. It does a pretty good job. You gotta make sure you wear safety goggles, because that stuff will pop up and hit you in the eyes. come off in big chunks. Let me get the majority of it off. Ball and sander. So you'll see the finish now. There's no more edge on it. 
and you can see these little chunks of metal here, that's the actual dross. And it comes off pretty, majority of it, but some still sticks and it, it like a nice sweeping line like this is less dross, but if you're doing like words and letters and real tight contours, every time that torch slows down and speeds up, you have dross build up. And it can be a real pain. And there's other ways you can remove dross. You can use muriatic acid, soak it in there for about a day and then we'll remove it. You can also use a belt sander. That seems to work pretty good, but with something like this, it'd be really hard to put on the belt sander, uh, like a stationary belt sander. Um, bead blasting it won't quite remove it. You can tumble it if it's small enough, but even then, if there's a lot of contours, it still won't, still won't, uh, still won't come off. So. I found the best way to do it is just scrape it and then just use like a palm sander. And the good thing about the palm sander is it doesn't round your edges. If you use like a four and a half inch grinding wheel with a flappy disc uh, and you're not perfectly smooth, um, nine times out of ten you're going to round your edges and have divots in, in your uh, piece and it just, I don't know, just looks bush like. So this is one of the major disadvantages of cutting with plasma is this draw. So your post-op time cleanup you have to factor it in. If you're only making one or two items, three items, five antenna, it's not that bad. But if you're making hundreds of something, you do not want to be sitting here doing this. Now for me, being that I'm mainly the only person that's working in the shop full time, that's what you run into. You, you, you end up having to do it, which is very time consuming. If you have a bunch of guys, you can do, hey, go ahead, you know, work on sanding this off. And then it's not so bad, but for the small shops that are doing it themselves, that's what you run into, you know. Uh, but for the price, you know, it's hard to beat, you know. Uh, you get into laser, I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, water jet, same thing, and they're more expensive to run, but man, you get perfect cuts off of those things, and there's like no post-op cleanup. It's great. I'm looking for, forward to that day. But I got one more of these to do, and then we we'll, should be able to start tack welding them up. Show that. But I'm sure you don't want to see this again. <laughs> right, Wiggy? Right, Wiggy? What's up, buds? All right, we're going to go ahead and start tacking this grate onto this, this piece here. Every so often. Might need to keep it from warping. Get some weight. This will help it a little bit. Since we really can't clamp it down. I'll put a couple tacks around it. Now, ideally, you weld this on a welding table, but my welding tables are full, and I really don't want the splatter and make all over the table. So this is just a sacrificial piece of uh, plywood. So it doesn't matter. I've done it before. They get little burn marks on it, but throw it outside when you're done. In the middle of a snowstorm, you don't have to worry about your place burning down. can't use a magnetic stand for your torch though. That's the only thing that sucks. Oh god, I hate all the PPE you gotta wear for MIG welding. So it really does throw sparks everywhere. Usually down your shirt, down your sleeve, on your cuff of your glove. <laughs> At least this is only one eighth steel, it's not it's not anything too heavy. Where's the rook when you need him? <laughs> right, Alex? You would, you would love to be doing this. Well, we'll see if that'll... I'll do it if we need to do more. I don't want to get too crazy because you get too much welding into something and it'll really warp, especially on this thinner stuff. Yeah. Not bad at all. This should be fine. Could if we want to put a little bit more every other one.
just cause. Sell these dimple dies as weights than I do as what their intended use is. Dimpling. So what we have to do then a one inch piece around it. It's gonna be close. I'm gonna just put this in the roller and roll it. I'm gonna lift this roller up. Ow. Just loosen the other one up. Son of a diddly. Because we're putting the bend not on the end, we're putting it in like seven inches or so. We don't want to roll that, so we gotta get it up in. So that's what we're gonna do. Slide that in. Right there. Ooh. That's a pretty sharp end. Let's back her out a little bit. Normally you can just roll it out, but with this, because we don't want to, we want that to be flat. We gotta kind of loosen it up so we can slide it out. Right, we got her really close to shape. We'll just hand form it as we go around and tack it now. Bend work for us, which that bend is perfect up to here, and then we just pull it back. Okay, there we go. All we have to do is trim this end off, if you can even see it. Yep. So we'll give you a close up, show you what it looks like. Started here, we kept it flush underneath. We had that pre bent, and then we just hand formed the rest. This 
just going along. Hand forming it, attacking it. Really easy. The whole way's up. And then we just need to cut this edge off here. And this guy, we need to do well, one piece across the back too. Um, but I think this is all I have time for today. But just going in, tacking it in along there. Now I'll go back and I'll tack some more in there to give it some strength. And that should be fine. And we only have two more to make. Anyways, that's about all I got for you guys today. I don't know if you can see me. This camera doesn't, uh, it's pretty dark, but my glasses at least. Um, anyways, yeah, that's about all I got for today. So we got it all cut out. We got the expanded metal working fine. Um, we cut out the eighth inch stuff. We shaped and formed that to show you what we got there. We got the angle iron cut and we got one pretty much 95% uh, done. We just need to weld on the back piece and do some powder coating. So stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll uh, get some more knocked out on it. This is just a job that's been lingering here for a retired citizen who was uh, in Florida over the winter and he's just come back. So uh, I said I'd get it done for him. So alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you did, stay tuned, uh, subscribe, and uh, we'll finish this up tomorrow, hopefully. I don't know if we'll get to the powder coating, but we'll definitely get them finished. Alrighty guys, Poppy's crying. He wants to go. He knows. He knows the sign off. Crazy, right? All right, I guess. Bye. So bring your A game, cause you know this party won't stop. We could never run out of time, sipping strawberry lime. You know I wanna share it with you. This is going boom. Ready to go. Alright, let's go, buddy. Let's go. Let's go play in the snow. Woohoo!